Almost one year ago I built this big and heavy bar clamp and this has proven to be especially handy for metal working like welding and grinding and stuff because these tasks sometimes just require a little more clamping force than what the average woodworking clamp is able to deliver. So this thing is completely awesome. But just recently I built this clamp which is much lighter yet much longer and this is one of the more like woodworky types of clamps. And I want to make at least five more of these. Now if you're a true daredevil you could of course try and buy a set of these clamps but <laughs> I'm not that tough and I'd rather stay safe. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I acquired all my materials at the local metal dealer, which means that I can't give you a link. But this is 6 meters of 30 by 10 and 6 meters of 30 by 5. And I think I paid about 35 euros. And the first step is breaking this down into more manageable pieces. This is a dedicated metal cutting chop saw that is considerably older than myself and it runs at much lower RPM than a miter saw for woodworking. The blade is also a special carbide tipped blade. You can easily find these blades online by typing metal cutting saw blade into an online search engine. Okay, all the bars are done. Now I still need to cut these filler pieces from the same kind of material. When cutting small pieces I like to set my calibers to the desired length and then push the workpiece over until the depth blade touches the saw blade. Okay, five bars and 20 filler pieces done. And now I'm just gonna cut the outer pieces of the moving jaw, the fixed jaw and the fixed jaw clamping pad. If the welds need to get ground flat again, I like to chamfer the mating pieces before welding and that ensures that there will be enough of the actual weld left over. Okay, and now welding these pieces onto there. I beveled the fixed jaw mainly for aesthetics. These super thin cutoff discs are really cool and I like to squeeze every little bit of life out of those. Bye. 
After all the welds were ground flat, I welded on the pads. Okay, one third of each clamp is done. Next comes the moving jaw. And this is how that's gonna go together with the bar. The inner filler piece is a bit longer to provide roughly the same length of joint as the outer one. When the moving jaw is pushed upwards it needs to release the bar so I need to shape these pieces roughly like so. Well, okay, that's a bit exaggerated. And this is how it works. The thing is free to slide on the bar until force is applied here, which makes a grab. And I'll put some shim in there Otherwise, that's gonna end up being too tight. And I just couldn't resist. The next step is welding one of these coupler nuts to the moving jaw arm. And when you're welding galvanized stuff like this nut, you definitely want to hold your breath for the rest of the day. I'm just going to use these washers to space the thing away from the tabletop and then clamp everything down. Shit. I always forget switching on that damn shield. By now I'd say the two-thirds of each clamp are done and the last part is gonna be the spindle. I've already cut five pieces of steel tubing and five pieces of threaded rod. And now I'm gonna make a couple of these discs that are gonna serve as the pads. I noticed that these don't really swivel all that well. They sometimes get caught up on this sharp edge up here. So I'm gonna grind them into a little bit more of a round shape and that should solve this problem. I also reduced the thickness of the rod to increase the swivel angle. and a bit of grease.
I don't think that dirt is gonna get in there and cause any problems, but we'll see. And I drilled and tapped the hole for a bolt that's gonna keep the moving jaw from sliding off the bar. I thought red would look cool, but then I kind of didn't like it. Obviously no paint would be optimal, because no paint can't rub off onto the workpiece. But the problem with no paint is that it looks really unfinished. Whilst waiting for the paint to dry, I made the handles. In cases like these, a second machine can really speed things up. There had already been a couple of small machines like this drill press in this shop when I rented it. Which was kind of cool. And now I'm gonna glue these handles in place and you might have already guessed it, I'm gonna use polyurethane construction adhesive. I don't think that a cross pin through the handle is really necessary, but I know that about 639 folks are gonna suggest that, so here we go. And now a coat of varnish and after this one is dry I'm gonna sand them and then give them another coat. Okay, the final assembly.
One can of course not make a video about homemade clamps without answering the one most important question, which is how much do they weigh? So let's find out. All right, three kilograms and 200 grams, which should be about 7.05479 pounds. You probably want to see the video about building my new sexy belt grinder. Well, it's coming, but I can tell you one thing already. Just a quick announcement before I go. I've been really struggling with making these videos lately and I've been putting this off for a very, very long time now. But a couple of things have changed in my real life and that means that I will also have to change a couple of things here. Now what it boils down to is that I will no longer be able to put a lot of money into making these videos. And that in turn means that I will have to make sure that this YouTube video making business will somehow pay for itself. But I don't want to become some kind of a commercial making robot for some goofy tool company. So what I decided to do is launching a Patreon account. Now this will not have to sustain my life functions and this will also not have to pay for my girlfriend's hamster's emergency surgeries. Everything that I may or may not earn from Patreon is going to go 100% back into the video making business. So if you think my videos are interesting, entertaining or plain stupid, please consider supporting me on Patreon.